Come watch a new documentary from KCET's Artbound about LA's punk scene, Chinatown Punk Wars. Then stick around for a live performance from the pop punk group The Linda Lindas, hosted in partnership with LAist and Grand Performances. Tickets at laist.com slash events. LAist Studios. Today on the L.A. Report, is there a chance the strike by Hollywood scriptwriters now in its fifth month could be nearing an end? And there are growing worries that tensions between the U.S. and China will rev up anti-Asian hate in the U.S. And then a spending fight in Congress could trigger a walkout by California wildland firefighters just as the fire season hits a peak. It's Thursday, September 21st. I'm Nick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. There is chatter in Hollywood that we could be near an end to the strike by movie and TV scriptwriters. Union leaders with the Writers Guild of America met yesterday with the Alliance of Motion Picture and TV Producers. That's the negotiating body for the studios and streamers. It was their first meeting in nearly a month, and it ended with both sides issuing a single statement that said they would keep talking today. Well, that statement alone was eye-catching, but so was this. Variety and other media outlets say top Hollywood executives, including Disney chief Bob Iger and Warner Brothers Discovery boss David Zasloff, were at the Wednesday meeting. Rebecca Keegan is the senior film editor with The Hollywood Reporter. She says the scriptwriter strike is putting the squeeze on the studios and streamers. It's imperiled a full season of TV. It's thrown next year's movie release calendar into disarray. And so that's obviously a big worry for the studios. And in terms of the WGA negotiators, a lot of their members have had their deals paused. A lot of them are sort of feeling the pinch economically. Members of the Writers Guild of America walked out on the studios and streamers back on May 2nd. Actors with SAG-AFTRA followed in July. Since then, movie and TV production has been at a standstill. So now a refresher from LAist reporter Robert Garova about the key issues at play in the Hollywood labor dispute. Back in May, the WGA said studios' business practices had slashed compensation and undermined working conditions for writers. Negotiators are pushing for higher streaming residual payments, protections around artificial intelligence, and minimum staffing for writers' rooms, among other demands. Writers have picketed at studios all over L.A. for nearly five months now, joined by striking actors and below-the-line Hollywood workers. L.A. is reporter Robert Garova. One more note, the Entertainment Community Fund has been busy during the twin strikes in Hollywood. It provides financial support to actors and entertainment professionals in need. Well, today, writer and producer Seth McFarlane donated $5 million to the Entertainment Community Fund. That's on top of a million he gave back in July. When we come back, worries that tensions between the U.S. and China will rev up anti-Asian hate in the U.S. And a spending fight in Congress could trigger a walkout by California wildland firefighters just as the fire season hits a peak. Sometimes all the intrigue around Britney Spears' personal life obscures the fact that she's one of the most innovative and signature pop stars of her generation. I'm DJ Louis XIV, host of the podcast Pop Pantheon, and I'm partnering with LAist for a live taping of my show, where we'll get into Britney's forthcoming memoir, as well as what makes her such an indelible pop figure, with a panel of mega fans and scholars. And stick around for a special Britney-themed dance party after the show. It's on November 2nd at the Crawford in Pasadena. Tickets at LAist.com slash events. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. As you know, tensions are high between the U.S. and China. Advocacy groups are now warning about Asians being scapegoated by politicians. L.A.'s reporter Josie Wong says there's a new effort to hold those politicians to account. The campaign is being called Stop the Blame, and it's being led by Chinese Americans for affirmative action and stop AAPI hate. The groups say they'll monitor political debates and campaign speeches for racist language. The groups also want to raise awareness about the proliferation of bills to ban Chinese citizens and those from some other countries from buying land near military bases. Stop AAPI Hate co-founder Manju Kulkarni says there's a fine line 
between addressing national security and fear mongering. And unfortunately, we have seen too many times political leaders cross the line at the expense of our safety and our rights. Kokarni says their campaign will support local groups fighting property ban bills that have been proposed or passed in more than 30 states. For LAist 89.3, I'm Josie Huang. It looks almost certain that a fight among House Republicans over spending cuts will mean the federal fiscal year will end next week without Congress passing the bills needed to prevent a government shutdown. And when that happens, it will also mean cuts to the Women, Infants, and Children Nutrition Program. That's WIC, and it helps low-income families put fresh fruit and vegetables on the table. Shannon Whaley, with L.A.'s largest WIC program, says Congress has to do something fast. If they don't act or if we go into a government shutdown on October 1st, I guess at 12.01 a.m., the WIC benefit for children will tumble back to what it was over two years ago. Shannon Whaley says the WIC benefits would drop from $44 a month down to 12 The WIC monthly stipend for children would drop from $25 a month to 10 Also caught up in spending cuts fights are pay raises for wildland firefighters. With that, here is LAist reporter Yusra Farzan. As many as half of our country's wildland firefighters could walk off the job next month. That's if Congress does not pass the Wildland Firefighter Paycheck Protection Act. And if they don't, the people who protect our national forests and parks will see their paychecks drop from $25 an hour to $20 an hour in California. Max Alonzo of the union representing the firefighters say our state could be hit the hardest. We're going to see a catastrophic loss of our natural resources of towns, we're going to see communities burn, we're going to see a lot of lives lost. And it is because Congress is not getting the job done. Congress has less than two weeks to vote, but the decision is at risk because of a looming government shutdown. For LA East 89.3, I'm Yusra Farzan. Thanks for listening to the LA Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to join us again tomorrow. The LA Report is produced by Nate Perez, Libby Rainey, and Tiffany Ujie. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, our director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Out of the Shadows is a podcast on America's immigration system told through the eyes of our Latino community. I didn't understand how difficult life was going to be being an undocumented person. I mean, I became undocumented at the age of 14. I'm Patty Rodriguez. And I'm Eric Galindo. Follow us as we tell the incredible true story of a group of young people who took on the system and changed the course of history. Listen to Out of the Shadows Dreamers on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.